Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. From 1965 to 1971, Green Acres was indeed the place to be. For six seasons, the CBS sitcom featuring a couple who traded fast-paced city living for the simple country life was a fan favorite. The series stars Eddie Albert and Eva Gabor as the couple who moved from New York City to a country farm. It was produced by Filmways Corporation and was the sister show to Petticoat Junction. Much like other early TV shows, Green Acres had its original roots in an old radio show. That show was called Granby's Green Acres, and it had the same basic premise about a banker turned farmer who knew more about growing funds than growing crops. That radio show aired for about seven weeks during the summer of 1950, but that inspiration allowed Jay Summers to create and produce the very similar themed TV show more than a decade later. But the whole premise of the series was somewhat based in reality. It seems fairly a bit far-fetched that a city slicker would leave a very lucrative career to rehab a dying farm without knowing a thing about agriculture. The producer basically got the idea from his stepfather and he expanded on it. He states that his stepfather wanted a farm in the worst way, and he finally got one. The producer remembers having to hoe potatoes and other crops when he was a kid, and he absolutely hated it, so much so that he won't do any gardening at his home as an adult. He became very resentful of this as a child, but he never forgot the premise. Eddie Albert, who starred as Oliver Wendell Douglas, had previously shied away from television roles, believing that that medium was geared toward mediocrity. But after his agent explained the whole idea behind Green Acres to him, he became hooked. He thought, I can do this. That's me. Everybody gets tired of the rat race and looks to escape. Everyone would love to chuck it all and go grow carrots somewhere. He immediately signed on, and he just had an instinct that the show would be successful. Both stars of the show had a little bit of their characters in them, in reality. Albert turned the front yard of his specific Palisades house into a cornfield, and he also had a large greenhouse in the back where he grew organic vegetables. Eva Gabor, who played Lisa Douglas, owned cats, dogs, birds, chickens, roosters, and rabbits. Vic Mizzy, who created the Green Acres theme song, certainly had a grand knack for composing catchy themes. He's also responsible for the Adams Family song, too. This marked the first time that the stars of the show performed the theme song. The actors on the show didn't ad-lib at all, ever. There was no time to improvise on that program. Both the stars stated that the program was so well written, there was really no need to improvise. It would be impossible to improve on it. They did everything the way the script was originally written. Actor Pat Buttram, who played Mr. Haney, and what a great character he is ended up meeting Elvis Presley's manager, Colonel Tom Parker, on the set of the movie Roustabout, where Buttram played the owner of a carnival. He ended up getting the part of Mr. Haney just a year later, and he later stated that he used Parker as the inspiration for his Green Acres character. The show is just full of little inside jokes, scattered throughout almost every episode. During one episode, Lisa explains to Oliver that he needs to accept her lack of cooking skills. She states that when you married me, you knew that I couldn't cook, I couldn't sew, I couldn't keep house, that all I could do was talk Hungarian and do imitations of Zsa Zsa Gabor. Zsa Zsa, of course, 
was Eva Gabor's real-life sister. There are also many references to the Beverly Hillbillies and Petticoat Junction, both of which were also produced or written by Green Acres executive Paul Henning. Now, there was a rumor that ran rampant after the show was canceled. That was that people thought that they had actually eaten Arnold the Pig at the show's rap party. I can remember when I was a kid hearing this and thinking, how could they possibly do that? This was a false rumor, though. The rumor stated that they had a luau on the final day of filming, and they ended up barbecuing Arnold the Pig. Tom Lester later on admitted that he made the entire story up because he was so tired of people asking him almost continuously what happened to Arnold the Pig. It's also reported that Eddie Albert and Eva Gabor were extremely close friends during the whole run of the show, and the chemistry between them often showed in the scenes that they were performing in. It's said that their friendship was very similar to how they played their roles as husband and wife. And when Gabor died in 1995, Eddie Albert was extremely devastated and heartbroken at the news. But after he died, he was buried only a few yards away from Gabor's resting place in Westwood Village Memorial Park Cemetery in L.A. Now, Green Acres wasn't afraid to get real creative with their production methods and they used pretty non-conventional practices that just didn't happen on TV shows back then. You see, in the TV business back then, they completely broke the rules. And the way they did this was by breaking the fourth wall, which is an imaginary divide between the actors, show, and stories, and the audience watching at home. They shattered this wall many times, and this just had never been done before, making just classic scenes by doing this, adding a silliness and funniness to this timeless series. Lisa was known for making terrible food, and she cooked some hotcakes that were unedible. So one of the running gags in the show was this inability for her to cook. In one episode, these jokes meet and create one of the more popular fourth wall breaks that they do. While making her famous hotcakes, which is the dish that could also be used as shingles for a roof, a spatula flip reveals the show's credits. When Oliver strolls into the picture with no names on the food, Lisa says, well, the names just stay on long enough for their mothers to see them. I don't have time to go into all of the times that they break the fourth wall, but it happens a lot on the series. Take a look back at this fascinating show from the 60s and see if you can spot a time when they break the fourth wall. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.